When I was a management graduate, I'm sure Pallavi has just mentioned that, you know, I've actually graduated in management, right? So I heard this beautiful story from my sales uh, professor. And he told me that, see, there was a, a tribal area in Africa, okay? And there were two salespersons who were sent there, okay? And this company was a shoe manufacturing company. How many of you have heard this story? None. Okay, so you pay a lot of interest in this. Now what happened was, these two salespersons, you know, would-be management scholars and salespersons, they actually went on to this tribal area and their task was to find out what is the market size for a shoe manufacturer in a remote area in Africa. Now these two children, I would say, you know, the budding management um, scholars, they went there and they noticed different things. They noticed that the people in that tribal area did not wear any shoes at all. And why was it? So, because there might be the climatic conditions, there might be their cultural and ethnocentric differences, or whatever. But there was salesperson A who said that no, there is no market for shoes here. Why? The reason is very clear. These people do not know anything about shoes. Why should they even try one? So there is a zero market for shoes in that tribal area. This was the verdict of salesperson A. Salesperson B, the same situation, same set of people, same tribal area, had a very, very different version to the story. He said, oh my God, these people are working in the scorching heat and they don't wear shoes. How is it possible? Their stamina and their everything, you know, their talent and their working capacity would multiply many fold if they wear shoes. So that means there is a hundred percent market for shoes in this tribal area because nobody had ever introduced the concept of shoes in this tribal area. You see the difference? One is salesperson A who is naturally going down with zero sales and the other person who's seeing a vast market because there is an opportunity which nobody had explored. Yes, I started my career in science, biological science, because I wanted to be a doctor. Of course, I am a doctor, but I'm not in medicine. I have actually done my PhD in emotional intelligence and print media management. Now, how is it so different? When I was growing, you know, like you, and I was also undergoing my management graduation, I, I heard one thing. That is, even if nobody is watching you, your cumulative effort is going to manifest into a big surprising opportunity in future. Fine, I had specialized in advertising and marketing management. No relation to journalism, okay? And I started my career as an assistant manager marketing in Samsung and I was selling ACs and microwaves and stuff like that for Videocon as well as Samsung. And then suddenly, this company had just ventured into uh, Jaipur, right? And I suddenly got a call out of nowhere that, why don't you come and join? I said, but I don't read Hindi newspapers. And you know why? Because since in convent, we were fined for even speaking a word in Hindi. So we were so much programmed during our school education that we couldn't think of reading a vernacular or a Hindi newspaper. But still, uh, my parents said, why don't you give it a shot? I said, but I have no relation to a newspaper and stuff like that. So what they said was, give it a try. You never know, opportunity comes, you know, uh, in a very coded manner, disguise, more often than not. So okay, I just, um, I took that call and I went there and basically I had to design marketing and branding strategies and you know research on the product and give them suggestions on product development. Imagine a person who did not read a newspaper by then was actually giving suggestions. At the same time, I started working for them not on a regular basis but on Sundays. So when Sundays, you know, your bed and your quills and your ACs, they actually hold you tight, right? They don't want you to leave the bed and all. That fight is very important for you to come out of that comfort zone and think that Sunday 
is an opportunity, a golden opportunity when nobody is working and you are working. That is how I began. And I had a very small, a very cornered kind of a cabin and nobody knew what I was doing except for the top management. Slowly and gradually, I gave them suggestions and yes, those suggestions were appreciated. And one fine day, there was a problem in the organization. And suddenly, the top management called me and said, there is a problem. A person who is an editor of a career magazine in our organization has to leave. You know, he actually is going on a long leave. In fact, he's quitting. He's planning to call it quits. I said, yeah, so? So he said, why don't you take it up? I said, editorial, and that too, as a career magazine editor, no, no ways, I'm not even a career counselor or anything like that. But they said, okay, what else is uh, the hassle? I said, nothing. I said, what is stopping you? I said, the apprehension that I have never done it before. So the top manager, who is of course the managing director, he looked at me and said, but I think I have a lot of faith in you and your capabilities. I've seen you over the last four, five years, the way you have worked even for an hour, but you were not working for 60 minutes, but 120 minutes in an hour. I said, but I'm so invisible in the organization. But he said, no, there are things that actually prompt us to identify the talent in the organization. I really gave it a second thought. I quickly placed a call to my parents and said, uh, can I take it up? Because this sounds very tricky. And my parents told me, what is there for you to lose? Remember that sales and marketing guy who went there, the guy number B, who said no shoes and one person identified that there's a huge opportunity. So there is a whole ground for you to learn and to explore Hindi and journalism. Take it on. You will learn in the process. And this entire arena of journalism became my territory of learning. And I welcomed it with open arms. So if you think that I'm here to talk about the perpetrators invading the private space of women journalists or, you know, uh, intimidating them or abusing them, you are absolutely wrong. Because I have not gone through any of these. But yes. There are certain social stigmas that are involved that I would like to tell you. Why? Because you are also readers. And above all, you're a part of very, very important thing, and that is the society, the entire social fabric. And you are the young powerhouses, you know, and you must know what not to do. You know what, what is my biggest inspiration? If anybody tells me, Prerna, you cannot do this. What will be your retaliation? You would naturally try to fight it back and you know, try to fight back, try to argue, why not? But I think that whenever someone tells you, this is not your cup of tea, this is not meant for you, you cannot do it, that's music to ears. That is the adrenal rush that you should have. That is the catalyst that we all are striving for, you know? When you want to achieve some kind of an excellence in life, opportunities will always come shielded in these dialogues. You have to identify. How many of you have thought that life has been very unfair? X, Y, Z has got the opportunities that you have not got. It is because we are not really consistent. When we are consistent and when we still feel nobody is watching, you do not know what is the cumulative effect of your effort? How you are going to transform your lives with your own actions, thoughts, and deeds, especially in journalism. I wanted to be a doctor, right? And how I changed my course to a journalism is because the purpose is the same. That is, I am basically a problem solver. That if supposing there are so many humans, there are so many problems that the world has these days, you look around, you know, even your own society, your own lane, have you ever seen those with an open heart, with an open eye, with an open mind? When you become very real with all those problems, when you try to understand those problems, you try to empathize with people, you become a citizen journalist yourself. 
You know that in our brain, there is a portion which is known as insula. Insula is a little more developed in females than in males. And you know what this insula gives you? The power to empathize. So that is an added advantage for women in journalism. Why? Because the men in journalism, what do they do? They stick to an emotion, the insula gets up activated for a very small period of time, and then they're out of it. But with the women journalists, the things are very, very different. You know, this insula is activated, and it actually triggers you to empathize with the entire audience, the entire suffered party, or whosoever is, you know, the target audience. You try to empathize, you try to understand their point of view and their perceptions, and try to reorganize the things in the form of a story which is very human, which is very you, which is very unique. And then it becomes a story that is a problem solver and a change maker. And what are all of you looking forward to? You're looking forward to becoming agents of change, right? Whether you're specializing in human resources or finance or marketing, you're actually going to be agents of change, right? A lot of times, you must have seen that when you're an entrepreneur and when you're working for an organization, there is a difference. What is the difference? In one case, the company is not yours. You're working for someone else. And in the other case, you're working for some, for your own self, for your own growth, for your own perpetuation. You know what is the difference? Again, you might think that, oh my God, this is something absolutely external to me. How can I even work so much for a company 24-7 for a company? Rather, I should have actually invested in my own business and my own setup or something like that. But you know what? When you take the ownership of your job, when you take the ownership of your title in the organization and you feel important about your role, that is the time when you actually become an entrepreneur within the organization. Your talents go on hunting for yourself. And what happens at the end of the day? What is the culmination? The kind of joy and satisfaction that you derive out of it is just uncomparable. Let me tell you one thing. Like I told you, journalism is a stream that normally people think that if you cannot be anything, be a journalist, because they're not so educated. I think it's all false. Yes, it's a very, very tricky profession because your social and your biological clocks are at loggerheads. You're working 24 seven. You have to be alert of any, any mistakes or errors, the factual errors that you might have made, right? There might be calls at 11 or 12. There might be safety concerns. I'll narrate an incident that once I was returning, it was during that Nirbhaya phase only when I was returning in my car and there was no um, vehicle, the police vehicle on patrolling that time, and there was a bunch of heavily drunk uh, students who were going by the car and they tossed a lot of beer bottles at my car, which broke the windshield of my car as well. So I, of course, was zapped by this attack and I, I quickly rushed home, right? I drove for the first time in my life at 100 kilometers per hour. But then I didn't lose my mind. The moment I entered, you know, it's normally a Cinderella affair. You have to be home at 12, but you're normally not home by 12 also, because if you're working, you're working. So when I entered there, I had called up the commissioner, because yes, journalism gives you a huge network of contacts. And I told him that this is what had happened with me. And you know, from next time onwards, what was my responsibility? Yes, he was Mr. B.L. Sony. He was very, very responsive. And he immediately tried to sort whatever best you know, solution he could give. He offered that. And from the next day onwards, I was supposed to tell him whether or not I found any patrolling uh, the Chetaks and something there or not. Isn't it amazing? I actually became his eyes and ears for the entire system. Because it's not a question of one woman's dignity who's on road at 12 a.m. Uh, in the morning, in the wee hours of the morning, right? It is the responsibility of the entire, entire society. So now that is the crux of whatever we are doing. And you'll be surprised to know that since I'm heading um, 
a very beautiful uh, product, which is called City Bhaskar. In this uh, particular product also, you will be surprised to know that 90% of my teammates, the reporters who are my eyes and ears, they're all women, and I'm so proud of them. Not because they do the so-called soft stories, but they do all kinds of stories. Now, when I talk of the social perception that we are all fighting, that is the biggest challenge in this uh, journalism. You know what is the perception? Oh, she's a woman, let her do the softer part. Let her give, uh, let us give her, you know, some kind of a glamour, or maybe some kind of a cooking or a beauty story. Why? Why can't the women professionals and journalists take up things related to STEM? That is science, technology, engineering, and medicine. In my case, in my team, there are people who are writing, my girls are writing on health issues. They're writing on real estate issues. They also were a very important uh, part of the election team. They were also a very, part, a very important part of the Jaipur bomb blast case that happened you know, years ago. So it is not that you, you know, your absence that is going to make a difference, but you have to be very, very strong in terms of your presence. You have to make yourselves heard. You have to opinion, your, uh, you have to voice your own opinion. Otherwise, nobody is uh, there, you know, nobody has the time and the patience and uh, the entire staff to listen to you, right? So I would just tell that since all of you are citizen journalists and very, very vigilant readers of newspapers and very responsible uh, citizens of this nation, which is a very young, nation that we have, a lot of things are in our hand. First, read as much as you can. Prepare yourself for life. Don't take it very casually, okay? Then learn whatever new skill set you can learn. Age is just a number. Any stage, anything is just a number. You know, when I did my PhD, um, I had taken around five and a half years to complete it because when you have to be up in the morning at five and you wind up your day by 1 a.m. in the morning, you hardly get time for research. But it's okay, it happened. Then I also went on to study pharmacy because it was very, very intriguing subject for me. Then I became a registered pharmacist while I was the editor of City Bhaskar. So there is no looking back. There is no time frame for learning. Learn from experiences of others, learn academically, learn by exploring, and learn to have your own brilliant voice. Because when you're unique, you would be noticed, right? I hope you uh, all enjoyed uh, the session. And don't think that you're just meant for management. Management is a skill, it's a trait that would be needed anywhere that you go. The sky is the limit. Thank you so much. Thank you.